الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبي إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خلق السماوات بغير عمد ترونها وألقى في الأرض رواسي أن تميد بكم وبث فيها من كل دابة وأنزلنا من السماء ماء فأنبتنا فيها من كل زوج كريم هذا خلق الله فأروني ماذا خلق الذين من دونه بل الظالمون في ضلال مبين Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Inshallah we continue with the Tafsir of Surah Luqman, chapter 31 in the Qur'an. And as we mentioned, Surah Luqman was revealed in Mecca. And the chapters that were revealed in Mecca, they are different from the chapters that were revealed in Medina, in that the chapters that were revealed in Mecca focus more on ideology, focus more on the belief system proving the prophethood of Rasulullah, proving God, and convincing the community of idol worshippers to let go of the idols and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to start believing in God. So this is one of the major differences between the Meccan chapters and the Medinan chapters. The ones that were revealed in Mecca, they focus more on the belief system. So here we see that the verses have moved on to talk about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using the creation as a means to convince people to let go of the idols who have not created anything, who the idols, they are created by the people and let go of these idols and believe and worship in Allah, believe in God and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these verses in the Quran in several places in the Quran points out that not only did God create, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about the intricate details of His creation. A lot of things that the Quran points out to that science just discovered in the last century or two centuries. So the Qur'an discusses certain things that even the people at that time, they had no idea about. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows His creation. Allah is the creator and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the creation the best. So we see that throughout the Qur'an, especially in the Meccan chapters, the Qur'an uses many ways and methods of convincing people to believe in God and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let go of their idol worship. One of the most important arguments that the Qur'an uses to convince people to come back to God and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let go of the idols is the argument of creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Qur'an tells us finding God and discovering God shouldn't be something very difficult. All that you have to do is look at the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the traces of God. What are the traces of God? The traces of God is the creation itself. The creation itself, that is the trace of God. If you, know, if you want to know whether a builder was in a place, you go and you see, there's going to be signs. The builder was building. A farmer was farming. Someone who, a cook was cooking. You're going to go and see that there's food ready. And then you're going to say, someone must have cooked this food. You're not going to assume that this just came out of nowhere. You're not going to assume that anything in life just randomly appeared. 
So why is it that some people, they reject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they assume that this creation just came? And this creation, it's not just something that just, you know, happened. It's so complex. There's so much intricate details in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, all I want you to do is look. Just open your eyes and look at the creation of Allah. Sanurihim. آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ And we shall show you, سَنُرِيهِمْ You will see the signs of God فِي الْآفَاقِ In the horizons. وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ And within yourselves. حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقِّ You will see it until you come to the point where you will be convinced. Some people... Their whole life they're looking, they travel, they look at the signs of God, the wonders of God, they reject. Not because their eyes are not amused with what they see, because of their arrogance, because of their pride. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will show you until you see that it is the truth. Some people they decide to accept in the beginning of their life, some people in the middle of their life, some people in the end of their lives. And some people they reject until the angel of death. That's when they see one of the signs of God. One of the, one of the um, laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that everyone dies. At that point, the non-believer will believe. But at that point, it's too late. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, throughout the Quran, in many verses, tells us to contemplate the creation of Allah. Go, travel, look. Look at the beautiful signs of Allah. Look at the seasons, how they change, how the spring starts. Look at the space, look at the sun, the moon, the stars. Look at yourself. Look at your children. Look at the universe. These are all signs that lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ at that time, during the time of the revelation of the Quran, the camel was the was very important, very important for the sustenance of life, for sustaining their life. They needed a camel in order to travel, in order to eat, in order to go long distances, in order to find water. So Allah says in the Quran, this creation that you love, that you adore so much. أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ Do they not ponder and look, how did this come into creation? Where it helps them travel, it gives them milk, it gives them meat, it gives them, it finds them water. Even if in times of, in times of extreme thirst, they could kill it and take water out of it. They would, they would need a camel for, for survival. So Allah says, do they not see how it came into creation? وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And in the skies, in the heavens. What is holding the skies? What's holding the sun and the moon and the stars and the skies and the clouds? What's holding them in place? وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ What raised them? وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ And the mountains, what placed them stationed in their place? وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ And on the earth, how it was flattened for you. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made parts of the earth flat for you to settle on. It's not, we can't live on mountains. Not everyone could live on mountains. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the earth in a way that is, that we can live in it. So here, وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرْ Here, the task of the prophets and the messengers and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is just to show people the way. We're not, we're not, Allah didn't send prophets and messengers to force people to believe. If someone was forced to believe in God, then what's the value of that belief? That belief has no value because this person is forced to believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends messengers to show us the way, to remind people, to guide people to the right path because every single person, they have that innate purity. Allah created us with that purity that will take us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That innate consciousness, that fitrah that the Qur'an refers to, that's what leads you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
All you have to do is look at the signs. All you have to do is use the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. They will lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave you the eyes. With these eyes you could see all of the beauty of Allah. You could see the beauty that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see something beautiful, who created that? Some people they travel thousands of miles, they pay thousands of dollars to go and look at an ocean, to go and look at a mountain, to go and look at a waterfall. This is beautiful because our eyes and our souls are innately attracted to beauty. We're attracted to beauty. Okay, so when you see the beauty, go a step further and ask yourself who created this beauty? If this beauty is a creation of the Creator, then how beautiful is the Creator? Allah Jameel Yuhibbul Jamal. Allah is beautiful and Allah loves the beauty. If you are attracted to the beauty outside, then that will definitely, it should definitely lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or your ears. We go and we want to listen to beautiful sounds. Who is the creator of all sounds? Who is the creator of all sound waves? There are some sounds that we could hear, there are some sounds that we can't hear. Allah is the creator of them. The eyes, our eyes only see certain colors. There are some colors that our eyes do not see. Allah is the creator of light and color. He's the creator of sound. Allah is the creator of texture. Anything that you feel, use your hands to touch things. You feel some things they're soft, some things they're rough. This is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah orders us in the Quran to use what He has given us. These gifts will lead us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another verse, Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Go and travel in the land. There's nothing wrong with traveling. Go and travel and look at the creation of Allah. How did God bring all of this creation into existence? If this creation is here, someone must have created it. Just as your food, your iftar, who prepared it for you? Someone must have prepared it for you. Your house that you live in, someone must have built it, built it for you. Your car that you're driving, someone must have you know, put it together. The watch, you see a watch with its intricate details. Every person with common sense says that there must have been a watchmaker to make this. Why is it that we don't apply this law when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is one of the oldest arguments of God, proving God is the law of creation. And this, it is said that the, one of the first who used this argument was Socrates the philosopher Socrates, he says that the precision and the order in the creation, it leads people to accept that there is not only a designer, but an intelligent designer. The precision in, your, in, in, in the creation, the precision in the universe, in the solar system, in everything that has been created. Imam al-Sadiq, he also uses this argument. There was an atheist, there was a man who did not believe in God, so he comes to the Imam alayhi salam and the Imam al-Sadiq, he brings out a piece of, he brings out an egg and he tells him, look at this egg. That man, his name was Ad-Daysani. He tells him, look at this egg. Don't you see it has a shell? This shell, it stops anything from going out and anything from coming in. But beneath that shell, there's a layer, a, wider la a white layer. And beneath that is the yolk, the yellow. This is something that nothing comes out of it and nothing comes in it. But after a time, it brings out a creation that has such beautiful colors with the colors of the peacock. Who created this? Do you see, the Imam, he tells him, do you see that this just came by itself? Who created this? That man, when he saw this argument from the Imam alayhi salam, he believed. He believed because that man, he allowed his heart to see the truth. But there are some people, despite the fact that they see the creation of Allah, despite the fact that they see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but their biases and their 
their um, perspective is flawed, where they don't, their arrogance and their pride stops them from accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepting that there's a creator, there's an intelligent designer. Yes, there are some people, they come and they say this uh, argument of creationism, this is not a very solid argument because don't you see the plagues, don't you see people dying, don't you see the natural disasters? This is not a perfect universe. If it was a perfect universe, then we would be living a perfect lifestyle. We wouldn't have diseases, we wouldn't have a virus, we wouldn't have all of these things. The answer is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the universe. The earth, it's not perfect for me. Am I the one who gets to decide whether it's good or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a system. I'm not at the center of the universe to come and judge whether the creation of God is good or bad. Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created has its own rahmah, has its own blessings. We say for example, why does, why does an earthquake have to happen? Earthquake happens because the, the ge geology of, the, of this creation, this is, the, this is the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Maybe it's not good for me, but maybe the, the earthquakes happening have a positive impact. Maybe something that I didn't notice. Some people, they don't want it to rain. Other people, they want it to rain. If it's not raining, some people say, why does God do this to me? If it is raining for the one that doesn't want to rain it, they'll say, why does God do this to me? Everything has its own purpose. Everything. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And the mercy of God has encompassed everything. There's a system. I'm not at the center of the universe to come and... Every, because everything is relative. Maybe something is good for me, but it's not good for someone else. Maybe sometimes it's not good for me, but it's good for other people. Right now, this virus, we're stuck at home. For us, it's not a good thing. But there's a lot of good that might come out of it. Maybe the planet needs some time to breathe. Maybe the planet needs some time. We're always hearing about you know, the global warming and how people are you know, destroying the planet and destroying life. Other, other animals, maybe now us being home, maybe this is a mercy for others. Even something as bad as death, everyone hates death. But even in death, there is some type of mercy. Imagine if people, they lived forever. There will come a time where well, they, were, they will wish that death comes. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe in a system. I'm not someone who comes and judges why does this have to happen and why does that have to happen. The system is running, the system is functioning properly and since it's functioning properly, then that means there's a creator and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Qur'an, it constantly takes us back to look at the creation and to look at the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it's the signs of God that will lead us to God. And these signs of God that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses in the Quran, sometimes the, these are you know, some of the signs that people have just discovered right now. Maybe there are certain things that the Quran is talking about that we have not even discovered right now. When the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, People didn't know the law of gravity. People didn't know about the expansion of the universe. People didn't know of many things that now they're, they're being proven by science and by technology and the advancement in, in science. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this. The Quran talks about the pairing of the male and the female. Subhanalladhi khalaqa al-azwaja kullaha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the expansion of the universe. How the universe is constantly expanding. In 1929, a scientist by the name of Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this 1400 years ago in the Quran. وَالسَّمَاءَ بَنَيْنَاهَا بِأَيْدٍ وَإِنَّا لَمُوسِعُونَ And it is constantly expanding. And so on and so forth. There are many books and articles that will point out many of the technical miracles in the Qur'an that prove that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only created, but He's a creator who knows what He created. So here, in this verse, in verse 10 of Surah Luqman, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to talk about the creation of Allah. And Allah points out five signs of the creation. And these are things that only if we just sit and think about. Let us just contemplate them for a few moments. Allah says, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens without pillars that you see. بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَن تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ كَرِيمٍ Allah says in the Qur'an, He created the heavens without pillars that you see and has cast into the earth firmly set mountains lest it should shift with you and dispersed therein from every creature. And we sent down rain from the sky and made grow therein plants of every noble kind. Here Allah talks about five of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have all seen these signs, but we some of sometimes we look at them and we don't think. Allah says, think. So Allah wants us to think. One is خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا Allah says He created the skies without a pillar holding it, without you seeing a pillar holding it. What does this mean? That means that there's something holding the skies. There's something holding the clouds. There's something holding the universe together. The sun is being held together in place by something. There's a pillar that you don't see. The moon is being held by something that you don't see. بِغَيْرِ عَمَدٍ تَرَوْنَهَا You don't see the pillar, but there is a pillar. Today, scientists have discovered that there are laws in nature. There are certain things that are holding down the cloud. They're holding the clouds in their place, holding the moon in its place. Is it, gra- it, it, it could be gravity and it could be others with, you know, with the cloud. It could be other things that are holding it in place and allowing it to raise. The small droplets of the water, because they're so light, they go up. That's, that's kind of like a bridge. The heat, it raises, it raises the clouds up. And it allows the, the water to evaporate. With regards to the moon, with regards to the solar system, with regards to everything, there are laws that are holding things in place. There are pillars that we do not see. Science has just discovered the, that there is something that's holding the moon in its place. It's not just floating around, not, nothing holding it. At that time, people, they would look at the moon and they say the moon is just floating. But now we know that there's a law of the universe that's keeping the moon in its place, that's keeping the sun in its place, that's keeping the earth in its place, and every planet, it's being kept in its place. And then Allah says in the Qur'an, وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَن تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed down burdens on the earth that hold down the earth in its place, that hold, hold you down in your place, so that you do not fall. Something that protects you from earthquake, from shaking. Now, people, they, when we try to analyze the Qur'an, a lot of people, they say it could be this, it could be that. For hundreds of years, thousands of years, people have been trying to guess. This could be the tectonic plates. The tectonic plates, they're very necessary. Even though scientists say that the tectonic plates, when they move, that causes earthquakes. But why are they moving? They're moving because beneath them, beneath the tectonic plates, is something that is unstable. We would not be able to stand on it. The tectonic plates, they're on that thing which is unstable and it's liquid form, in a fluid, hot and fluid form. The tectonic plates are on it, so we are able to stand, we're able to you know, walk, we're able to move around. You would not be able to move on something fluid. Can you walk on water? Can you stand on water? No. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed something on earth, these tectonic plates for you to move, move on, for, you, for, for, for it to give you the stability. Now yes, sometimes because of what's under it moves, that causes earthquakes. But that's the system. That's the system that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. وَأَلْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ رَوَاسِيَ أَن تَمِيدَ بِكُمْ of course, another group of scholars, they say this is Allah talking about the law of gravity. The law of gravity 
is what's holding you down. Without the law of gravity, you're going to fall. You're not going to be able to stand. So Allah is telling you, I have placed something that's holding the skies up and the, the heavens up and something that's holding you down. Isn't this something that you should be contemplating about and thinking about? وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created within the earth from all of the dabba, all of the creation. What is dabba? Dabba is anything that walks, anything that crawls, anything that moves, يَدُبُّ الْأَرْضِ Anything that walks on earth is called dabba. So we, the humans could be a dabba, the animals, anything that moves on the earth is a dabba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, look at this creation. Even you yourself, who created you? Who created all of these billions of animals, of insects? Even an ant is a dabba because it moves on the earth. Who created all of this? Did this just come by itself? I'm surprised when I see some who claim that they are knowledgeable, that they have studied the laws of the, of the universe, the laws on earth, and then the laws of nature, and then they come and they say, you know what, every, every uh, effect has a cause, but then they, they totally neglect this law when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where's the common sense? So Allah says, وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ and these animals, this creation, a lot of it is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has even created types. So it's not just one. Allah has created certain animals for us to eat, certain animals for us to ride, certain animals for us to, that, that we refrain from, we can't eat them. These are all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything has its own purpose. Every animal, every creation, every insect, has a purpose because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not create anything for no reason. Allah is wise. Allah is knowledgeable. Maybe I don't understand what's the purpose of a bat, for example. I don't know what's the purpose of an ant. I don't know what's the purpose of a fly. But every single creation of Allah has its own purpose, which makes this whole system complete. I've, see, I've read some studies. It says that they introduced, they introduced wolves to a forest, they introduced a handful of wolves to a forest, and they saw that everything changed, the ecosystem changed as a result of several wolves introduced in a forest. People, if they want to, if they want to look at it from, a, from their own perspective, people might be scared of wolves. They might say, you know, they come and they kill our sheep, they eat our flocks, I don't want a wolf. But Everything has its own purpose. Maybe we don't realize the purpose. Maybe we don't understand and comprehend the purpose. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not create in vain. Just like Allah did not create the animals and the insects in vain, Allah did not create you and I in vain. We have a purpose here. And our purpose is to use our intellect, which brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah continues and says, وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً And we have brought down from the skies water. We are all in need of water. Water is so crucial for our living, for our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us water. We use water to drink. We use water to live. Water is very important for life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Allah doesn't send us salt water. Allah doesn't send us dirty water. Allah sends us pure, filtered water from the heavens, from the skies. Clean water for you to be able to drink. For you to be able to live and nourish your body. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. God creates in the perfect form, humans destroy why do the people of Flint and why do people here and there don't have water? It's because of the misdoings of people. Otherwise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. But some people when their life is not going well, they, they try to blame it on God. They try to blame it on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, just imagine if you didn't have water. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَا إِنْ معين. Imagine if your water was too deep in earth and unreachable, 
Who is it that can bring you water? Isn't it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't it Allah that brings water for you when it rains? Allah has placed springs in the ground, sp springs on earth for you to drink from that water, for you to benefit, for you to grow, for you to feed your crops, for, to raise, you know, grow crops, for you to feed your animals. Water is necessary for life. Of course, here just a side point, the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, they use this verse. This is in Surah uh, Al-Mulk. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوْرًا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَاءٍ معين. The Imams, they say, water is symbolic to life. Water equates to life. If your water is unreachable, who gives you water? Allah. If life is unlivable, who is it that's going to fix your life? Of course, Allah, but through Imam al-Mahdi Allahu ta'ala farajahu al-Sharif. And the Imams of the Ahl al-Bayt, they, they point us to Imam al-Mahdi when life is unlivable, when people, the human race has destroyed life, when they have killed the ecosystem, when they have destroyed everything, when they have spread viruses everywhere. Who is it that can fix everything? It is Allah through Imam al-Mahdi, the Savior, the promised Savior. So this is one point. And then the fifth point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to look at is فَأَنْبَتْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ كَرِيمٍ And we, as a result of the water raining down, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we made grow therein on earth plants, zawj, pairs of plants, of every noble and generous kind. How many types of plants are there? How many types of trees are there? How many types of fruits and vegetables are there that we eat from, that we enjoy? When we eat this, let us say, who created this? Let us thank the one who created this. Let us start our meal by appreciating and end our meal by appreciating the one who created this for us. And then Allah says, the plants are not just plants. The, the plants are also in pairs. They have the pollen and the egg. This is something that the Qur'an was talking about 1400 years ago. And here, مِن كُلِّ زَوْجٍ كريم. Scholars say, why does the Qur'an use the word kareem to describe plants and vegetation? Because plants are truly generous. Plants, when they give you, they don't ask for anything in return. They keep giving you every year and every year. Allah sends them the rain. And they, they grow in their own. They pollinate. And, or the wind pollinates it, and that's also a sign that's mentioned in the Qur'an. وَأَرْسَلْنَا الْرِيَاحَ لَوَاقِحِ We have sent the wind to pollinate the plants. Allah talks about this. So, they give you, they give you food, they give you oxygen, they give you greenery, they give you beauty, they give you everything. مِنْ كُلِّ زَوْجٍ كَرِيمٍ And then Allah says, ponder about these five. And then Allah says in the Qur'an, هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونَهِ بَلِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ This is the creation of God. Now show me what those others who you claim to be gods, who you worship and you claim to be gods, what have they created? What have your idols created? The idols, you create them. What have they created? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the one who created you and He knows everything about you and He has, He sustains you and He gives you everything that you have. So this is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says in the Quran, بَلِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ The wrongdoers, the wrongdoers, they are misled, they are astray. And who are the wrongdoers? The greatest act of injustice, as the following verses will point out in Surah Luqman, is associating a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here, Allah, the, ver the surah is setting the foundation. Look at the creation. These are the creation of Allah. Now, don't associate a partner with God. Believe in God. And the next verses, they will go into detail regarding this matter. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahirin. Nas'aluka Allahumma wa nad'uuk. Bismika al-azim al-a'zam al-a'az al-ajal al-akram ya Allah. 
يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغني كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم اكسو كل عريان اللهم اقضي دينا كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشفي كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين وأغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات نهدي ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلوات اللهم صل على